morning. Hamlin towns in Brunswick, my famous Hanover city. The river Wesser deep and wide washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you've never spied. Moen begins by Dippy, almost 500 years ago. To see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats, and bit the babies in the cradles, and ate the cheeses from the bats, and ate the soup from the cooks from the ladles. Put open the kegs of salted sprats, made nest to the men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mayor is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking to think we buy gowns lined with ermine for dolts who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic robes ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. Find the remedy we are lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. At this, the mayor and corporation point with the mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, eyed by urban gown cell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one crack with brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just he said this, what you have? At the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through wondrous back. 
were brighter were his eyes were moister than a too long open oyster, save when at noon his paunch for muteness or played turtle green and muteness. Only a scraping of shoes on the mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart will hit a path. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, his sharp blue eyes each like a pin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin. The lips were smiling out and in, there was no guessing his kith or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, it's as my great grandsire, Starting up with the trunk of the tombstone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced towards the council table. Please, Your Honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm, to draw all the creatures living beneath the sun, that crawl or swim or fly or run after me, so as you never saw. Now, Chief, we use my charm on creatures that do people hard. Mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they notice round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe, the match of his coat of self same check, and that scarf's end on the pipe. And his fingers they notice were ever strained, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, Pied Piper as I am, in Tartaria for any can. Last June, from his shooting swarms of gnats, I eased an Asian and I am, for monsters through with vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand builders? One, fifty thousand was the exclamation, the Scottish Mayor Corporation. Into the street, Piper steps forward and first a little smile, as if he knew what magic sucked in his quiet pipe a while. Like a musical adept, the glow his pipe is nymphs and wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled, and ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, the muttering grew to a grumbling, the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling, great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, Brown rats, black rats, gray rats, twenty rats, brave old plotters, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the Pied Piper for their lives. From street to street he piped advancing, and step to step they followed dancing, until they came to the River Wesson, where it all plunged and perished, save one who stout as Julius Caesar swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to rat land home as commentary, which was, after shrill notes up the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe into the cider presses ripe, and moving away of pickles up boards, and leaving a jar of console cupboards, and drawing the corks of train oil flasks, and breaking the hoops of butter casks, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by harp or by celery's breathe, called out, O oh, rats, rejoice, the world has grown to a vast dry So munch on, crunch on, take your lunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just a bulky sugar punch on, already stayed like a great sun shone. Gracious, scarce an inch before me, just to be caught and said, come for me. I found the Wesser rolling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells they rock the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, get long souls. Poke up the nest and block up the holes. Consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rat. When suddenly up the face of the pipe of Kirk in the marketplace, the first of you please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too, for council dinners made wear havoc with Claret, Moselle, Vin de Grave, Hawk, and half the money would replenish their cellar's biggest butt of Rhenish to pay this sum to a wondering fellow with gypsy coat of red and yellow. Besides, quoth Mayor with a knowing wink, our business is done at the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink. Once dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink from our duty of giving you something to drink. No matter of money to put in your coat. But as for the gilded, what we spoke of them, as you well know, was a joke. Besides, our losses have made us swifty. A thousand gilders come, take fifty. The piper's face fell, and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise to visit my dinner time, Baghdad, 
except the crime of the head cook's potage, all he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen, of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him I proved no bargain driver, with you don't think I'll bait a stiver. The folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I brook, being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival, with idle pipe and vesture piebald? Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe with smooth straight cane, and ere he blew three notes, such sweet soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave the enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling, of merry crowds adjusting, a pitching and hustling, small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, and little tongues chattering, like foals in a farmyard with barley is scattering, out came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with rosy cheeks and flats and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like like pearls, tripping and skipping ran merrily after. The wonderful music was shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, as if they're changed to the blocks of wood. Unable to move a step or cry, to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with an eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back. And how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosom feet, as the piper turned from the high street, to where the west had rolled its waters, right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west, the Gulfberg Hill his steps dressed, and after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He never crossed the mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When lo, they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. The pipe bird advanced, and the children followed. And when all were in to the very last, the door of the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No one was lame, and could not dance all the way. And in after years, if you'd blame the sadness, he was used to say, It is dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, and flowers were forth fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow was buried a peacock here, and their dogs all ran our fellow deer, and honeybees had lost their stings. The horses were born with eagles' wings, and just as I became assured, my lady told me speedily cured. The music stopped, and I stood still, and found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas, for Hamelin, there came to many a burger's pig, a text which says at heaven's gate, opes the rich at his easy rate, as the needle's eye takes a camel in. The mare sent east, west, north, and south, to offer the piper by word of mouth, wherever was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he'd return the way he went, and bring the children behind him. But when they saw it, he was lost and never, the piper and dance were gone forever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, the veteran memory affixed the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing pipe or tabor was sure for his future to lose his labor, nor suffered they hospital or tavern, shocked with words the street so solemn, and opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column, and on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away, and there it stands this very day. And I must not admit to say, that in Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way and dress of which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison into which they were to pan a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin towns and Brunswick lands, but how or why they don't understand. So, Lily, let me and you be wipers, the scores out of all men, especially pipers. And if they should pipe us free from rats and from mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise. Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning.
My first batch is almost done, almost cooked. I'm making bagels. Montreal bagels, Vancouver style, we like to say around here. Uh, bagels. I'm making Montreal style bagels. I'll show you one in a minute here. Yeah, that is a raw bagel, a raw cooked bagel. Or raw cooked bagel. <laughs> uh, cooked bagel, I should say. There's, there's a bag, those are bagels with uh, seeds on. Sesame seeds. So the camera angle isn't great right now. So it's in between my face and my hands. I'll just adjust that a minute. There we go, we got 30 bagels on the board. So, hmm. Goes pot, table, board, oven, crate. Pot, table, board, oven, crate. So we're at the board stage. About to put them in the oven. Then I'm gonna put another batch in the pot. I'm just reshaping the bagels here. Okay, I'm gonna put my next batch in the water. And the boards go into the oven. And I clean my table off. I just need to go run to the back here again.
My first batch is in the oven. My second batch is in the pot. My first thought was he lied in every word, that hoary cripple with malicious eye, askance to watch the working of his lie on mine, the mouth scarce able to afford, suppression of the glee, the pursed and scored its edge at one more victim gained thereby. What else should he be set for with the staff? Let's say to waylay with his lies and snare, all travelers might find him posted there, and ask the road. I guess what skull like laugh would break, what crutch can write my epitaph and pass on the dusty thoroughfare. If at his counsel I should turn aside into ominous track, which all agree hides the dark powers, yet acquiescently I turn as he pointed, neither pride nor hope rekindling at the end described, so much as gladness some men might be. For what with my whole world wide wondering, what with my search drawn out through years, my hope dwindled into a ghost not fit to cope with that obstreperous joy success would bring. I hardly tried now to rebuke the spring, my heart made finding failure in its scope. As a sick man very near to death seems dead indeed, and feels begin and end the tears and Turks. Hello, hi, hey, come to Turkey, yeah, yeah, I'd love to come to Turkey. <laughs> I'm making bagels. I, I want to go to Turkey to try the simit. I don't eat simit. Send me some simit, Turkey man. Turkey man. I'm making bagels. Yeah, yeah, sim it, yeah. Oh, sorry, I missed all your comments there. It's paddle is back. Pizza, delicious. Um, I'm not making pizza, I'm making bagels. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd love to come to Turkey. Buy me a ticket. I'll have to save up for that ticket. I'm pretty sure it's an, not a cheap ticket. Um, I live in Vancouver, so I'm a fair distance away from Turkey. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to go to Istanbul. Istanbul. Uh, no, I'm Canadian. Um, I don't know what my ancestry is. I think it's Norwegian. Norwegian and English. Norwegian, English, Scottish. I don't know. I should do that 23 and Me or whatever to find out what I am. Oh yeah, thank you. I know the farewell. I know the. Uh, Oh, Google Travel, <laughs> I see. Oh, I see, you're Turkish, yeah. I'm Canadian. Canadian.
I'd love to visit Istanbul. Oh, thank you. Good luck. To you as well. Italy, welcome. I'd love to visit Italy as well. I want to I want to travel the world, really. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Two batches, ha 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 ha. Two batches on the table. One batch on the table and one in the oven. Ha ha ha. Oh my god. Bagel fell apart. No, I'm making bagels. Yeah, that's an everything bagel. Which Turkish team do you know? I don't know. I don't. You mean football? I don't follow football very much. I got. Um, uh, I guess I, I sort of follow the English teams. I guess. Um, uh, Vancouver has a team. Our team's called. Our team is called the Ice Caps. I've, I should go to a game. I've never been to a fo uh, football game in my entire life, so. I, I mean, a uh, European football game. I've been to an American football game. I think, yeah, I, was, I went to Calgary. Calgary Stampeders game once when I was a kid. Pepe Moda. What? Nice. I know Pepe. Pe Pepe? Pepe? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I think I know. I know his name. Um, Medi. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I sort of know. I, yeah, I vaguely. Yeah. I'm not. Um, I don't really follow football, so. I like. I like football. I just don't really watch it, so. Okay, I can put my next batch in. Okay. I, I don't know how soon I'll be able to come to Istanbul. It's going to be a while, I think. Maybe two or three years. Give me some time. I need to save up some money. Turkey. Turkey to Calais. Come by the way. I will if I can one day. 20 euro.
So I got two batches in the oven and one in the pot. I'm just cleaning up my table now. Someday soon I'll come visit you in Turkey. Send what? Send bagels to you? <laughs> I don't think uh, they wouldn't be very fresh. I'm in my 30s. My late 30s. My very, very late 30s. <laughs> Unfortunately, hard work. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty hard work. Half half his job is just waking up and coming to work, though. So. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. Hard work. Yeah, my boss is good. My boss is a very decent man. I have several bosses. I have a bakery, a bakery boss, and then there's the owner of the business, and then there's the store manager. Maybe one day I'll be the boss. The screen is frozen. Oh, I, uh, that's all. That's all coming from my side. Uh, I think that's your phone. Is it just? Yeah, I think it's just you. Uh, yeah, I'll come to Turkey, but not not uh, anytime soon. Maybe in a year or so or more. I have no money saved up right now for a trip to Turkey. I will definitely come to Turkey though when I have the, the, enough money to go. I'll put it on my bucket list. So multi grain, multi granule. Granulated. Are, are the bagels hot? Yeah, they're hot. 
I'm wearing gloves though, so now I move quickly. You don't wanna you don't wanna hold on to a hot bagel for very long. Give me. <laughs> uh, if I could, I'd give it to you right through the screen. But... Okay. I say the address. I'll yeah, I'll, I'll check out your address. I will go to Turkey one day. I hope. Okay, see you. I uh, see you. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. My first thought was he lied in every word. That's where he crippled with malicious eye. Asked kids to watch the working of his lie on mine. The most scarce sacred tool for it. Suppression of the glee. The person who stored its edge at one more victim gained thereby. What else should he be set for with his staff? What saved waylay with his lies and snare? All travelers who might find him posted there. And asked the road, I guessed what skull-like laugh would break, what crutch can write my epitaph for pastime in the dusty thoroughfare. If at his counsel I should turn aside into ominous track, which all agree hides the dark tower, yet acquiescingly I'd turn as he pointed, neither pride nor hope rekindling at the end descried, so much as gladness some end might be. For what with my whole world wide wondering? What with my search drawn out through years? My hope dwindled into a ghost not fit to cope with that obstreperous joy success would bring. My heart to try now to rebuke the spring, finding failure in its scope. As a sick man very near to death seems dead indeed, fears begin and end the tears, and takes the farewell of each friend. And here's one bid the other go, draw breath, freelier outside. Since all is over, he saith, then the blow will fall into a grave it can't mend. While some discuss if near other graves be room enough for this, and when a day suits best for carrying the corpse away, with care about banners, scarfs, and staves, and still the man hears all and only craves, he may not shame such tender love and stay. Thus I had for so long suffered in this quest, heard failure prophesied so oft be writ, so many times among the band of wit, the knights who two dark towers search to dress their steps, that just to fail as they seem best, and all doubt was now should I be fit. So quiet as his bear I turned from him, that hateful cripple, out of his highway into the path he pointed, all the day had been a dreary one at best, and dim was settling into its clothes, and shot one grim red leer to see the plain catch its spray. For mark, 
No sooner was that fairly found, pledged to claim out their pace or two, than pausing for backward a last view. Over the safe road plus gone, gray plain all round, nothing but plain with horizons bound. I must go on, naught else remained to do. So on I went. I think I never saw such starved and noble nature. Nothing throw, for flowers as well expect a cedar grove, but chortle and spurge according to their law, but propagate their kind with none to awe. You think a bird had been a treasure trove. No pen may hurt to sing remaining. In some strange sort were the land's portion. See you, close your eyes, said Major Pinchetti. In nothing stills, I can't help my case. Tis last judgment's fire must cure this place. Calcine his clods and set my prisoners free. If there pushed any ragged pistols off the buckets, mates, his head was chopped. The beds were jealous else. What made the holes and rents in the rocks crush worse leaves? Bruised as to fall. All hope of being is, tis a brute must walk, passing the life of the brute's intense. As the grass grew, scarce his hair and leprosy. Thin dry blades prick the mud, which underneath were heated up with blood. One stiff blind horse as every bone to stare, stood stupefied however he came there, thrust out past service from the devil's stud. Alive he might be dead for aught I know, with red gaunt and calip neck as rain, and shut eyes beneath the rusty mane. Seldom went such grotesqueness with such woe, I never saw a brute I hated so. He must have been wicked and deserved such pain. I shut my eyes and turned them on my heart, as a man calls for wine before he fights. I asked one draft of earlier happier sights. Ere fitly I could hope to play the part, think first, fight afterward, the soldier's art. One taste of old time sets all to rights. Not it, I fancy Cuthbert's reddening face beneath his garniture of curly gold. Dear fellow, till I almost felt him fold. An arm in mine takes me to that place, that way he used, alas, one night's disgrace. Oh, and my heart's new fire and left it cold. Giles, then, the soul of honor, there he stands. Frank is ten years ago, when night at first. An honest man should dare, he said he durst. Good, but the scene shifts. Fall what hangman's hand pinned to his breast the parchment. His own band reads it. Poor traitor spit upon and cursed. Better this present than to pass like that. Back, therefore, to my darkening path. No sound will sight as far as the eye can strain. Will the night send a howl at our bat, I ask? When something on the dismal flat came to rest my thoughts and change their train. A sudden a river crossed my path, as unexpected as a serpent came. No tides congenial to the glooms. This, as it frothed by, might have been a bath for the fiend's glowing hue. Ooh, to see the wrath of its black eddies be spat with plates and spoons. So petty yet so spiteful, all along low scrubby alders kneeled over it. Drenched willows flung them headlong in a fit of rope despair. A suicidal throng, the river which had done them all the wrong, whatever that was, rolled by, deterred no whit. Which while I thwarted good saints, how I feared to set my foot upon a dead man's cheek. Each step or feel the spear I thrust to seek, the hollows tangled in his hair or beard. It may have been a water rat I speared, but ugh, it sounded like a baby's shriek. Glad was I to reach other bank, now for a better country. Vain presage, who were the strugglers? What war did they wage? Whose savage travel could thus pad the dank soil to a clash? Toads in a poison tank, or wild cats in a red hot cage. The fight must so have seemed in that foul assert. What penned them there with all the claim to choose? No footsteps leading to that horrid muse. None out of it. Mad brewing second round their brains, no doubt, like the slaves to turn. It's for his past on Christians against Jews. As far as ever from, and more than that, furlong on, why there? What bad use was that engine for, that wheel, or brake on the wheel? That harrow fit to reel men's bodies out like silk, with all the air of Tophet's tool, on earth left unaware, or brought to sharpen its rusty teeth of steel. Then came some stub ground, once a wood, next to marsh would seem, now mere earth, desperate and done with, so the fool finds mirth. Makes a thing and mars it till his mood changes and off he goes. Within a little fog, clay and marsh, stand in stark black dirt. Now blotches rankling color gay and grim. Now patches where some meanness of the soils broke into moss or substances like boils. Then came a palsied oak, a cleft in him, a distorted mouth that splits its rim, gaping at death and dies while it recoils. 
as far as ever from the end, not in the distance, but the evening not, point my footsteps further at the thought, great black bird Apollyon's bosom's friend, sailed past and beat his wide wings dragon pen, that brushed my cap for chance the guide I sought. For looking up where I somehow grew, the plain had given place all round to mountains with such names to grace mere heights and heaps now stolen in view. How thus they surprised me, solve it you, how to get from there was no clear case. Yet half I seemed to recognize some trick of mischief had happened to me, God knows when, in a bad dream perhaps, here ended progress this way, when in the very nick of giving up one more time, came a click as when the trap shuts you're in the den. Burningly it came upon me all at once. This was the place. Those two hills crouched like two bulls, locked horn in horn in fight, while to the left a tall scout mountain, Dunn's daughter the dozing at the very nuts after a lifetime of training for the sight. Not see. What in the midst lay but the tower itself. The round squat turret, blind as a fool's heart, built of brown stone without a counterpart in the whole world. The tempest's mocking elf points to the shipman, thus the unseen shelf he strikes on only when timbers start. Not see, because of night perhaps, why day came back for that. Behind it left the dying sunset, kindled through a cleft, the hills like two giants in the hunting lay, chin upon hand to see the game at bay, now stab and end the creature to the heft. Not here, when noise was everywhere, it tolled, increasing like a bell, names in my ears of lost adventurers, my peers, how such was strong and such was bold, and such was fortunate, yet each of old, lost, lost, one moment now in woe appears. There they stood, ranged along hillside met, to view the last of me, a living frame, for one more picture in a sheet of flame. I saw them and knew them all, and yet, Dauntless the slug point to my lips I set the blue child rolling to a dark tower came. That was Child Rolling to a Dark Tower Came by Robert Brown. In its entirety. In its glorious entirety. Entirety. I have Three batches in the oven and one in the crate, and we're gonna put another in the pot.
Those are everything bagels. As a, as a finished product, that's um, that's just me, and that's everything. Heart asks pleasure first, and then excuse from pain, and then those little anodynes that deaden suffering, and then to go to sleep, and then if it should be the will of its inquisitor, the liberty to die.
So this morning I have two batches in the crate, two batches in the oven, one batch in the pot. It's going pretty good. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. The bagel stream. Good morning, hello. These are rosemary rock salt bagels.
morning. Oh, I think that's all we got for today. Hello. I'm making bagels, Montreal. Montreal style bagels. Boiling them in a pot of honeyed water. And they're on mahogany boards. It's a gas fired oven, not wood fired, but what can you do? Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the stream there. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Come and get a bagel. We're, at, we're on Commercial Drive in Vancouver. We're called Rosemary Rock Salt. My name's Steve, or Steven, whichever you prefer. Have a great day. Thanks.